everybody. This is the 23rd annual San Diego Comic-Con Superhero Kung Fu Extravaganza. If you have been here at any time in the last 22 years, welcome back. And if you have never been here before, welcome to quite the experience. As if you didn't know, I'm Rick Myers. And over the last 23 years, I've been hosting the Kung Fu Extravaganza, but I came to the Extravaganza from Inside Kung Fu Magazine and my books on martial art movies and my all the DVDs I did audio commentaries for. And now I'm probably best known for writing Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie movie, as well as Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie book. Wikipedia me. I have my own page. And here are my wonderful co-hosts. We have got Chris Mancini, Jan Lucanus, plus two, Eric Jacobus, and Frank Jang. Hey, I want to thank our friends and collaborators, dare I say partners over at Welco USA, who are the game in town when it comes to Asian action cinema. That's why we've been working with them these last couple of years. And after the previous extravaganzas, we would, we would always direct you down onto the San Diego Comic-Con floor where you could pick up the DVDs or the Blu-rays to have in your hands, but we can't do that now. But we're, we're looking out for you still. We still want you to see these films and we think you'll want to after you see these clips. So they now have the Haya app, the Haya TV app. You, it's a streaming service. You have it on all your devices. And if you go to the site and you use the promo code Comic-Con, I think you're going to enjoy the benefits you get from it. But enough about that. Let's get on to the show. In the last 22 years, we've always had guest stars at, this, at the San Diego Comic-Con Kung Fu Extravaganza, and this year is no exception. Please welcome back to the Kung Fu Extravaganza, the great Scott Atkins. Hello. It's so great to have you back on the Kung Fu Extravaganza. I've been yes. waiting to see you for since we, you were last there, because you should remember, we had a huge gang and I wasn't able to concentrate on everybody. And I felt terrible because you're Scott Atkins. <laughs> Just me now. Well, Just me. Yeah. So tell me how you got involved in action film. Start from the very beginning when you were a kid. What got you excited? Go. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Yes, well, growing up, um, appreciating Bruce Lee, don't really recall the first time I saw him because he was just out there as the ultimate martial artist, kung fu guy, and really appreciating Bruce Lee ever so much, staying up late to watch his films. But um, I do remember that moment when I was 12 or 13 and watching Bloodsport uh, with Van Damme, and that being the moment that I remember thinking, and that is what I want to do with my life. And I remember going and running to my mom and saying, Mom, I know what I want to do with my life. I want to do what he does, Jean-Claude Van Damme, international martial arts sensation. So I remember that specifically as really properly making my mind up. I wanted to portray martial arts on screen and be like the guys that I admired when I was growing up, like Bruce Lee, Jack Chan, Van Damme, and, you know, to some extent, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, all those action guys. So when did the dream become the reality and how did it become the reality? I mean, for me, there's never been some sort of uh, overnight success thing with me. I mean, anyone that knows my career, it's been like a steady incline and I, you know, I've worked very hard to get where I am because I came around at a time when, you know, growing up in the 90s, there were so many of those America-made low-budget martial arts films. You get two coming out every week and you know they weren't the best quality but that was the stuff that I was soaking in as a kid I was loving it and the Hong Kong cinema and all the rest of it um but obviously in the 2000s when I be you know it was my turn to get into the business those films were starting to go away so it's it's been a bit of a struggle but you know I feel like I've been one of the guys keeping the genre alive by will and determination so you your career is like a who's who of modern action cinema are you able to choose your favorites or your, your give me your top five favorite fight scenes 
top five that yeah. I've done. Either one. You can start with ones that you love and then you can go into yours. Well, top five favorite fight scenes that anyone's done. I mean, so Fist of Legend, Jet Li, the end fight with Billy Chow. That's an amazing fight. Um, I've always loved They Live, not because of its choreography, just because it tells the story so well. And I love the way it just went on and on and on. We paid homage to that in my new film, Debt Collectors, which just come out. Um, come out in May. Uh, God, it's always a tough question, isn't it? Um, I guess Armour of God Against the Monks, Jackie Chan. Love that. Um, I have to think of my favourite stars. So Donnie Yen, yeah, Flashpoint, the end fight in Flashpoint. I mean, that was great because Donnie bringing the mixed martial arts into a Hong Kong shot action sequence was just like incredible, amazing, amazing. That's probably my favorite fight, actually. Flashpoint. Yeah. I love it when he does that MMA style. That kitchen fight in uh, the other one was great as well. Special ID. I mean, there's so many. I could just go on and on. I mean, I can name Samo stuff like him against uh, Richard Norton and Pedicab. Uh, what was it? Pedicab driver? Is it the, the one with the, the badminton rackets? Oh, no, anyway. that, was, that, was, um, that was one of the Wheels on Meals ones. That was uh, that Wheels on Meals? Oh, star. but hang on. So Wheels on Meals, I've got to say, with uh, Benny Okidas, of course. Yeah. Uh, now Dragons, Forever. Dragons Forever as well. That's an amazing fight. Yep. Okay, my best fights. End fight in Ninja 2. End fight in Undisputed 3 with Marco Zoror. The other fight in Undisputed 3 with Latif Crowder. Uh, my fight in a sporting goods store with Andre Olovsky in, in Universe Soldier 4 for its brutality and inventiveness. And um, the end fight in Avengement, which, uh, to, I mean, we just made it brutal and, and hardcore, and that turned out brilliantly. The latest thing you're doing that we're also going to be showing clips from, Max Cloud, is a change yeah. of pace. Max Cloud is really the first all out sort of br broad comedy that I've done. Yeah, and I haven't seen it yet. So I'll be honest, I don't know if it's funny. Okay then, who wants the first dance? near max cloud is here not bad not bad at all that guy's head came completely off his shoulders <laughs> <laughs> your commitment your commitment to your role you're always in it a hundred percent maybe One too much maybe too much in max cloud let's find out i went all in i remember saying to the director are you sure this is going to be okay <laughs> He's like, yeah, I love it. It's brilliant. I'm like, okay, well, you realize I'm trusting you here because yeah. I don't know if this is going to work. It's such, it's such a pleasure to see you work because, again, your commitment, your knowledge of both martial arts, cinema, and acting. It's just great to talk to you, Rick. It's a pleasure. Oh, it's a great pleasure mm -hmm. to talk to you, too. Thanks, Rick. See ya.
yourself. Welcome to mayhem. So you want mayhem? I'll bring mayhem 24-7. You know, here at the uh, Kung Fu Extravaganza, we have a long history of introducing upcoming rising action stars to all of you. This year, again, no exception. We've got the amazing Peter Pham, who, who's a Kung Fu teacher. He's, he, well, again, he'll tell you everything that he does. And he is right now, and we're going to Vietnam to talk to him. Here's Peter Pham. How are you doing, sir? Very well. Tell me all about yourself, stranger. Well, I've, my name is Peter Pham. I, uh, I was born in 1974 in uh, Saigon, Vietnam. Uh -huh. And uh, I've st I started studying martial arts when I was 13. And my first start of martial arts was uh, Taekwondo. And uh, in 1993, I left the country, uh, immigrated to the United States of America. And uh, then I picked up another start of martial arts called Hong Kong, Five Animal. And uh, eventually, I found Wing Chun, and I fell in love with it because uh, it was uh, it was very uh, unique and uh, suitable to my body style, fit perfectly for me. So I have been practicing and teaching kung fu for over twenty years now. Hmm. And then uh, my name was following around the internet, and then a lot of the uh, American filmmaker in Texas reached out to me for a choreography. So whenever they wanted to shoot an action scene, they would call me. And then my name, you know, got flow around in, in the community for an action guy. And then, uh, and then I looked at myself, you know, on on the screen. I said, you know what? I, I think I can do this. You know, I have the ability. I have many years of, of martial arts experience, and it helps a lot. And I fell in love with it. Every project, I feel like I have something something new to learn. So I always want to improve myself. <clears throat> and I'm sure the next one is going to be way better. Well, the next one is Foggy Mountain, right? Foggy Mountain is my uh, my script. Uh, I wrote the script, and I chose uh, Salmon Cook, the gentleman who was in uh, Ip Man Three that fought with Donnie in, in the elevator. So when I sent him the script, uh, he loves it, and uh, we chose him, and he flew over here, stayed with me, and trained, and we shot the movie. Do you use Wing Chun in Foggy Mountain? I use uh, Wing Chun and Jit Kune Do and some MMA. There was some uh, ground fighting. Some oh. stick fighting, mm -hmm. some stick fighting. And uh, Wing Chun specifically against Simon. Simon is such a beautiful martial artist. Uh, the way he executes his Muay Thai movement, amazing. You know, he can actually slow-mo his spinning elbow in the air. You go slow-mo in the air like that, go past my face or fly knee and past my face, amazing. I'm so, I'm so happy to have got you onto the uh, Kung Fu Extravaganza for the San Diego Comic-Con. And I hope to see more movies and have you on more Kung Fu Extravaganzas. Yes, sir, it's my pleasure, it's my pleasure.
let's get going. And what we do here is show the best action scenes, usually from Asia, sometimes America, this time only Asia, of the year, from July to July, the best action scenes. And listen, hey, you know the situation that we're all in, which is why we can't be at Comic-Con. We're all in our little places all over the country. And these films are also in isolation. And we're coming to the end of the Kung Fu genre, it seems. And if you want to know what it's like to be in Hong Kong right now, have we got a film for you? And they're up against the Chinese Film Bureau, who changes the rules all the time if they don't like something. But there's only one filmmaker who finds his way through that labyrinth. And that is Wong Jing. And Wong Jing's contribution to this year's Kung Fu Extravaganza is a reimagining, not really, it's just the taking of a great old title, Enter the Fat Dragon which Samuel Hung made many years ago as an homage to Bruce Lee. And they've just taken the title and they've given it to another Bruce Lee fan, the great Donnie Yen, and they just do anything they want. If you watch the entire movie, the end credits go on forever and they show clips of all sorts of things, including an entire dance number, which is not in the film. And that shows you the method to Wong Jing's mask he knows that the Chinese Film Bureau is going to cut up the film. So he just gives them all the spaghetti and he lets them tie the ends together. And he doesn't care how it turns out. You want to see? Take a look. I want to use a Yeah, good one, see. Come on! liked the, the clip and uh, I would have loved to have been in the room with the pitch when it was like all right it's like Harold and Kumar but with martial arts and we can't afford White Castle so we're going with 7-Eleven. Perfect you you can be the next Wong Jing. Frank? Yeah I, I really like the uh, agility of the whole sequence everybody's moving there's nobody slowing down lots of acrobatics almost like a combination of a Jackie Chan and Samuel Hong film but you you see Donnie Yen doing it. So, of course, this is homage to Samuel's own End of the Fat Dragon. So, obviously, you, you can see the, the you know, the, the little, you know, homage there. But I also like that little shot where he was, you know, avoiding all those bottles. It right. reminded me of, like, Toshiro Mifune in Throne of Blood, trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to prevent the arrow. Shot by the arrow. So, yeah, I, I just love that little, little nice little touch there. So, that takes us away from Hong Kong and China, everybody. We're out, of, we're out of town and we are flying to Japan. And we are going, and there's not a lot going on in Japan outside of manga and anime, which are awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. But the live action stuff is few and far between. And it, most of the stuff in Japan is on television. So watch this. This is based on a true story and it is directed by an Englishman who directed the horror movie Candyman, a guy named Bernard Rose. <laughs>
さか植木殿陣内江戸からの客はもうついておる遠足で疲れ果てた藩士たちを待ち伏せておそう我らも行くぞ私の文のせいですねそうだお主は役割を誤りですこれはただの遠足でございます悪に背くことなど何一つ起きておりません勇気殿も分かっておいででしょうそんなことはどうでもいい我らが使えているのはあんなカーではないご公儀なのだ藩士たちを城に戻すわけにはお前は間違っております陣内身分をわきまえよう隠密は我らだけではない我らは草だ草は草でしかない情けは命取りなのだしかし分かったまずお主から聞いてみるべきだろう One of the reasons I love that sequence, and I, I had a choice of several sequences, one with the samurai actually doing the marathon, but I chose that one because I'm the author of the Ninja Master books for Warners. And so that's one of the best authentic ninja scenes that has been put in cinema. Because ninja were, were the scum of the earth in Japan. They had no place, on, no place on earth, no place in heaven. So they weren't as beautifully trained as the samurai. And this scene captured that very, very well. I believe a lot of you have something to say about that. Jan, you have something to say about that? I thought the hero looked like Bruno Mars, so I kept on hearing Uptown Funk while watching the,、uh, the fight scene, but it was pretty amazing to me. That would have worked really well. Frank, you have something to say about it. Yeah, two things that really stood out for me the handheld cinematography, as they started fighting, you notice the camera is following them. Uh, you know, with the every move, and somehow it m a k e that fight so much more intimate and personal, which of course befits the, the, the story. And the second thing, of course, is because of the fact that Philip Glass scored the film. And I, you know, as a big fan of classical music, I think Philip Glass is one of the most amazing contemporary composers. And to have him score you know, a samurai film, I mean, that's the icing on the cake. And that music is just so, 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 you know, it just fits that mood so perfectly. Yeah. Eric, you have something, right? Yeah, I would、uh, watch that clip a few times. I noticed they, they did a magic trick in the, in the middle of that clip where they're fighting with two swords, and then one of the guy's swords disappears from one shot to the other. He suddenly has no sword. I have no idea. I was trying to break down, like, well, did they take a shot and they lost the shot? I'm not sure. No, special ninja trick. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool move. Ninja magic. I gotta put that one in my next movie. And now for something completely different Takeshi Miike.
Takeshi Minke is one of the great Japanese live action filmmakers. He's done everything. He's done more than a hundred movies, seemingly this year, but even so, and he's done amazing movies. He does everything from Ninja Kids to the audition. Let's get to the film he put out this year. You can never predict what's going to happen in a Takeshi Miki movie. And here's a great example. First Love. Ah! <laughs> 
The gentleman who uh, who was shot several times but didn't feel it because he's hopped up on drugs, he's also in Samurai Marathon. So if you get Samurai Marathon and First Love from Welco USA, definitely check, check out his appearance. And also, I'd love to know how many times they took the shot of his head going across the floor and Takeshi Miki going, no, the blood splatter didn't look good enough in that shot. Let's do it again. But knowing Takeshi Miki probably did it once. Frank, what do you have to say about First Love? Yeah, I, I love that dark humor part. Is and also like when his hand got his arm got chopped off. It's like it's to him like just a scratch, you know, almost like a Monty Python Holy Grail reference. But I, the the thing I loved most about that whole sequence was the combination of sword, gunfu, and actual hand to hand combat. I thought that was very well done. That's why I included it, Chris. Well, as violent as that sequence was, I was looking at it thinking, you know, that's probably not the first time people have lost limbs at a Home Depot. <laughs> Very true. So there you go, everybody. We've had a wonderful time. I hope you've had a wonderful time. Now I want to introduce you officially to our wonderful panelists. Chris Mancini, tell them what you're doing. Hi, uh, thanks uh, for having me. As always, Rick, it's always a fun time every single year. Um, I just launched a new company, whitecatentertainment.com, and we focus on storytelling for comic books, movies, and podcasts. So you can check out, we just had a Kickstarter fund for Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master, a martial arts uh, comic book, comedy comic book, and we're looking to launch some more uh, podcasts. So get on the, uh, get on the uh, mailing list at whitecatentertainment.com. Jan Lucanus, everybody, with his friends. What's going on, everyone? I'm joined here by my teammates, Andro Roxana Stanchu. Hi, everyone. And Autumn Noel Kelly. And we're from Justice for Hire, the cinematic universe built by you. Anyone can join JFH creating their own hero. And you go on missions, you find new friends and build teams, and every mission you do builds out your own mini movies that tie together into a massive storyline. So it's a lot of fun, and we'd love to see you there. Justiceforhire.com, you can go there right now and sign up. Excellent. Eric Jacobus, the king of web kung fu. Wow, what an intro. Um, thanks, Rick. Hey, uh, uh, even though we're not in the same room together, um, it's always so fun being on the panel with you guys. Thanks for having me again. <clears throat> so I started a company uh, called uh, Super Alloy, and we are now working on, um, I'm still doing my, you know, my old school martial art movies, obviously, but we're starting to do 3D martial art movies. And we have a clip from um, our latest one, Kung Fu versus Zombies. And when you watch it, uh, note that there are 50 or so characters in the in the entire scene, but we did the entire film with two people as performers and then a two-person crew. This is a four-person crew. Call it the ultimate uh, Corona filmmaking, where you know you, you you need a tiny crew to do something like this, and uh, we're really excited to start doing 3D martial arts, and it was all done with motion capture. Awesome, Frank, Jang, everybody. Oh, hey, thanks, Rick. So recently, I've been uh, involved in doing a lot of commentaries and uh, making of stuff for Eureka Entertainment, which is a UK company. They've been uh, releasing a lot of the classic Hong Kong titles. Uh, these are Region 2 Blu-ray, so it, you, you can only play them on a multi-region player. However, they've been really dedicated to preserving and releasing a lot of the classic Hong Kong you know, movie titles, such as the, like the Sam Hong three films with the Eastern Condors and uh, Fist of the Iron, uh, Iron 
Fist of Monk, and their latest, uh, and also latest release of Throwdown, which also included my own new solo commentary, as well as the one that Rick and I did with Tai Singh. Uh, oh, wow, you know, 12 years ago, I think. So, yeah. And meanwhile, I've got a bunch of stuff that you can check out on my website for my podcast, actionfilmautopsy.com, or you can check me out on Wikipedia or whatever. But in the meantime, we're running out of time. Two and a half hours down to 45. So just remember, everybody, hopefully we'll see you in person for the 24th annual San Diego Comic-Con Superhero Kung Fu Extravaganza. But until then, stay strong, smart, serene, sympathetic, sane, and safe.